We are tracking fall-like temperatures the rest of this weekend into next week, but a major weather pattern change is in the offing, and we also have a tropical system to watch in the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to be talking about those two main points in today's weather forecast. Welcome back, everyone, to Weather on the Go. All your weather coverage on this Sunday, September 8th, 2024. Hope everybody's having a great weekend out there. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're quickly approaching 98,000 and ultimately 100,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do so to help out. Make sure to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below, especially if you do like today's weather forecast after the video. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those later on today. What you're looking at here right now is your height anomaly map. The blues show where we have a trough in the atmosphere. The oranges and reds, those are where we have that ridge in the atmosphere. And we have a trough that's going to be bringing cooler temperatures across the northeast U.S. and southeastern Canada. A ridge out west and in western Canada, that's going to be bringing us warmer temperatures. And you can see it very well reflected right here on the temperature anomaly map. With that trough, we're seeing much cooler than normal temperatures across south southeastern Canada where that trough is mainly centered but also across the eastern central U.S. as well temperatures that are 20 to 25 degrees below normal today and then out west with the ridge it's warmer right so we have more warmer conditions above normal temperature anomalies for Western Canada and the Western United States areas that are 30 degrees above normal for this time of year. We did start off the morning with some very chilly temperatures in and around the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and interior New England, and then up into Southeastern Canada. A lot of these areas started off in the 40s, if not some upper 30s for some areas this morning. The afternoon highs will arrive into the 50s and 60s in those areas this afternoon. So still a chillier afternoon than normal more of a fall-like afternoon for you folks. A little bit warmer off to the west, the Great Plains, the Dakotas, all the way south to Texas. You can expect 70s, if not 80s, this afternoon. And then more of the heat out west with that ridge of high pressure. And some of that heat will extend into Canada, into southern British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and parts of southwestern Manitoba this afternoon. Highs there could reach well into the 80s, if not the 90s. And here is the precipitation map for this afternoon. The only precipitation in town is really across the Gulf Coast, southeast coast. So if you live near Savannah, Georgia, for example, Orlando, the Tallahassee region, or New Orleans, you may see a shower or a thunderstorm going into this afternoon that's along a stationary boundary and that will continue into the evening and there's that stationary boundary that is responsible for bringing all that moisture across these regions over the next 24 hours or so so that's what we're seeing and that stationary boundary is attached to our tropical system we'll be talking about here momentarily here are the rainfall amounts going through monday over the next 24 hours and you can see the heaviest will be down in central florida in and around the orlando tampa bay areas we could be seeing up to an inch of rain so be watching out for that and then most of the rain really off the Gulf Coast over the open waters as well, just south of New Orleans. As we go through next week, we're going to see a major pattern change start to become a little bit further to the east. So we're going to see the ridge out west that's going to start to drift further east as we go into Monday, but especially seeing that pattern change by the middle of the week on Wednesday, September 11th. And you can see that we do start to see that ridge begin to build across southeastern Canada and the northeast U.S. And then a major trough tries to move in across the western U.S., a big pattern change by midweek, and then that trough will start to move progressively further east by Friday, August 13th, or September 13th. So looking here at your temperature anomalies for next week, this is the upcoming work week, Monday, September 9th through Friday, September 13th. You can see the warmer temperature anomalies are going to be up over the top there across southern Canada into the northern tier of the United States. And we have a tropical system coming in. A lot of cloud cover, a lot of rainfall with this. Could be bringing some below normal temperature anomalies down here into Texas, for example, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and much of the southeast as we go through next week. Temperatures 10 15 degrees below normal for that time frame. Let's look at those temperatures. Highs on Monday afternoon. This is tomorrow afternoon. Pleasant day again across the east. 60s and 70s to go around. Low humidity. Some heat building in the middle of the country. Say the central northwest plains up there into the northern Rockies. Southern Canada. 80s to 90 there on Monday. Starting to spread those 80s out. Becoming a little bit more expansive as we go into the middle of the week. As we know that ridge is going to be building further east. 
And then we have that trough further west, and that is going to be bringing some cooler temperatures into the 50s and 60s out west. That'll continue into Friday, and then we have the full-blown warm-up across the east, so the Mississippi Valley and east. We're going to be seeing a warm-up as we go into Friday, although down here in the Tennessee Valley, remnants of whatever tropical system we see will be bringing lots of low cloud cover and precipitation. That could cool us off briefly into the 60s and 70s for Friday. Here is the precipitation prospects we see through next week, and it's mainly going to be tied to what could be named Francine as we go in towards that Monday time frame tomorrow. And looking over at the tropical update, this is the National Hurricane Center's tropical weather outlook over the next seven days. There are a couple areas of interest way out here near the main development region that have a moderate chance of developing, but those right now look like fish storms for the most part. We are more concerned about an area more localized here in the western Gulf of Mexico, stretching down to the Bay of Campeche. They have a 90% chance of development, so near certainty in development over the next couple of days, and this is allowed because we actually are, you know, entering into the peak of the hurricane season, so climatologically, this is what we are seeing as we go into next week, and it is right on schedule. Here are the warm water temperatures and degrees Celsius that we do have in the southwestern Gulf. I mean, it could not get that much warmer. And you can see with those sea surface temperature anomalies, these, those are well into the oranges here. So we are well above normal and ahead of schedule here with these sea surface temperatures as we go into the Gulf. Here's the latest ensemble tracks with this system that could be named Francine. And you can see it hangs off just to the east of Mexico's coast and then up there towards to coastal Texas, maybe just off the coast of Corpus Christi, Victoria, and Houston. And then possibly making landfall here and most likely path near Lake Charles, Louisiana and up toward Monroe, Louisiana as we go in towards the middle part of the week. And the intensity guidance has this mostly at a mid-grade to a strong tropical storm. Some of the guidance is actually moving it up into a low-end category one. I would not be shocked if a lot of this changed within the next 48 hours. Once we get the low pressure center formed, once we start seeing how strong the system is going to act, I would not be shocked to see even a category one fully or even a cat two system because of how strong those warm, uh, uh, the, how warm those sea surface temperatures are down there. So let's look at two weather models here. This is the HAFS A parent model. It does a very good job in showing a 1,006 millibar low developing just off the east coast of Mexico tomorrow. And once we get that low pressure center, we'll have more information on where the system will certainly go. You can see by Tuesday, maybe down to a 999, already a tropical depression, tropical storm at this point. By Wednesday, a full-blown tropical storm on this model down to a 989, maybe even a Cat 1 hurricane on this model. And then has it making landfall, like we said, in Lake Charles and then up there toward Monroe, Louisiana. Very strong system on the HAFS A parent model, and this would actually draw in some drier air, so it would actually quickly weaken once it moves into land, but a lot of moisture with this system. And here is the HAFS B parent model. This is a little bit different uh, depiction of the system on Monday. Still very similar, maybe a little bit further south, 1,007 millibar low. This is just a little bit further east of Texas and Brownsville by Tuesday just off the coast of Corpus Christi, Victoria, and Houston on Wednesday. And then as we go into Thursday, September 12th, still over the open water, so it has a little bit more time to strengthen, although the dry air kind of undercutting the system. And the HAFS B parent model is a little bit more of an open wave, so more of a heavy rain threat versus a wind threat here with this system. So either way you slice it, heavy rainfall and flooding will be a concern with this system. The HAFS A parent model showing the heaviest of the rains moving all the way as far north as almost the Memphis. Memphis area, so we'll be keeping a very close eye on that. That goes through Friday, September 13th. The HAFS B parent model, not as far north with the heavy rainfall swath, but still as far north as maybe Jackson, Mississippi, the Birmingham, Tuscaloosa area, maybe even Montgomery as we go through Friday, September 13th. It's all in the track of the system, the strength of the system and everything. We'll have more information, of course, over the next few days, so stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so we can give you the latest weather information right at your fingertips with the latest videos and live streams on this channel. Make sure to also turn on all post notifications so you do get those videos and live streams here in the future. Thank you all for subscribing. Also, make sure to like the video. Give it a thumbs up down below if you did enjoy today's weather forecast. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those after the video, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their weekend out there.